camera is here. Okay, and we're, we're live here with Makers, and um, I think my camera's got... Who knows? Or just maybe I'm, I'm naturally out of focus. Um, but so, yeah, we're going to do some pairing on, uh, I think, the, the delete, deleting feature, which I did, I did, I sort of, I, I worked on a lot of it uh, before, and, um, but then got, got on sidetracked, and uh, so there, there's an old branch that I had, but let's look at the very latest, uh, latest stuff. Let's um, get that there in the background. In the town. In the town. So um, my, I, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm a wuss, but I still believe mine is my uh, idea of choice for Rails at the moment. Um, well, I think it's it's just it's 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 got all these it's got all these like armrests and things and support features. Um, and the thing that I that I just that I just love. So, for example, if we start uh, looking at, let's say, try and get rid of. Let me just close. So, if we go and look at organizations controller. We've got, you know, we've got an interesting delete method there that is just not not exposed. Um, but it's only available to the admin. But the thing that I, I love um, is that, for example, if I, you know, I've got all my different methods in here. If I click Command B, it jumps automatically to where that method is defined. And I just that, you know, rather than kind of like, oh no, where's that one? Being able to just go directly there, and then I can jump straight back. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm really addicted to that feature. <laughs> anyway. All right. Makes mm. sense. So, um, so th there's various things. If we look at it, we've got various things in here that you'll be familiar with already. This is, this is our organized world, just to, to, to link it back up to the, the, the top level thing. So we've got our um, uh, local support system, and so we have a list of um, charity organizations, and here I'm logged in as an admin, and there's various admin functionality. I can, as an admin at the moment, I can edit anything, you know, and just to make it, you know, sort it out of this and the other. Um, these things you see here now, the URL organizations there is mapped to our organizations controller. And here we are in the organizations controller, and we've got various things like this device. We've got the before filter in there with authenticate user, and we're saying search, index, and show. Um, anybody can see. Um, I feel like I want to refactor to search into the. I feel I feel bad about having a non-restful uh, method there. That was um, early days, but so we've already got the delete operation, and so it would be relatively straightforward to go for. Um, uh, well, if we wanted to expose the destroy operation to the admin user, can you work out where where would we look? What change would we need to make? Given that we already have the destroy in place, how would we make that actually, you know, visible to the user, to, to the admin user? Make sure you're logged in as the admin. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we do have that, so here we've all, at the moment... Oh, um, that, that's checking for it, but are you are you logged in as the admin at that point? Yes, and, and if you if you aren't, then it will just sort of tell you to go away. I'm, I'm thinking about test for some reason. Oh, oh yeah, no, we could be oh, test driving it. I was just, just sort of like, like laying out the app for us. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the thing I was, I was going for, um, oh, not that one. Is that at the moment, if we have the um, the view for if like when we um, just for the individual or even like the show page, at the moment we have in here, you know, if you have permission to edit the organisation in the view that we provide the the edit link, but um, there, at the moment there's no delete link in there. So in order to expose the functionality of deleting it, we, there's a relatively simple just change to the to the view that we would make. Um, but my concern about doing that is that then. Yeah, even a well-intentioned admin could accidentally delete an organization, and we wouldn't have any way of rolling it back. So that's where the um, access paranoid check comes in. And that's what it's about. And it's basically, um, even if you're not necessarily exposing it through the interface, um, it's about having um, the ability, for, at least for the, for the system administrator, to say, OK, you deleted all the wrong things. OK, I can now roll that back mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, without necessarily rolling back the entire database. You can. And also, you could then present to the user, he, he, the admin user, here's the list of things that you deleted previously, and you can click undo on them. And I think that's yeah. my point. Like, rather than having a pop, up, you could have like a JavaScript alert popping up saying, "Are you sure you really need to do this?" But people get used to just sort of clicking through on those. So there's an argument from the uh, human computer interface field that says, just always provide undo. It's, you know, 
allow the users to do anything they want to, but just allow them to recover from that, from that state. Sometimes that's very tricky, but uh, mm -hmm. but so um, so we've got this is this is how this is how we, we do this. And I guess what we might actually start with um, before working on the user, we might just start on some some uh, unit tests. Maybe um, what I'll do is if we go and get um, go and get a terminal um, and we go documents. Uh, GitHub, uh, so this is my thing here, we'll do git uh, pull origin develop. So we always start from the develop branch. Oh, let's go and, if I go and, uh, oh, Firefox and, what an, I, I would really like, I wish that my, all my cookies and everything would stay in between, I, I don't know that I want all my cookies to expire when I shut down the browser. I just, I just, I'd like it, you know, I guess, I just, you know, I, I, I hate having to, really? Okay, all right. Um, that's what, there we go, all right, so we were looking at the delete thing. And so, because we're working as part of a bigger team, critical thing that we do first is we say that we, um, basically, we're going to, so I guess we've got, we've got a, I think we've, really, we've got like a little task here, which I think is, first is like, um, add, Access paranoid. So what we're going to do to let the team know what's going on is we're going to click start on that. So then other people could, you know, know right not to touch this uh, while we're working on it. Um, yeah. So we've got our. So what we'll also want to do is if we do git checkout minus b. So I've already got. Let me do git branch. I've already got like a very old branch um, where I did this before called. Um, for access power. All right, let's do that. Let's um, let's call this um, git checkout minus b acts as paranoid uh, makers, and we're in there. So we're, we're in a branch, and we can now play around with more we'll about that. So um, I think let, if we start with the unit tests, um, if we go into our specs, we can go and have a look at our. Um, the spec models, and we've got organization there. So this is, you know, we've got a lot of them, but we've got, actually, we've got, we've got anything to delete in there or destroy. Um, no, I don't think so. So what we should maybe start off with, particularly got doing a new gem. I mean, I, I know that this is a relatively long running gem and so on, but uh, even if we're not going to keep these tests in the long run, it would be nice to do some tests like to check that the gem works as we expected. So um, we could, um, I don't know if Sasha wants to um, Should we start here with a little describe block to? Yeah. So I, I might use, I might go to describe, like, you know, uh, destroy or delete users access power. I mean, in, in this describe block, it's kind of like we might do, we might even just say this, this describe destroy. And then we might mention as the first test case, you know, that, you know, we can do destroy and that it works. So, um, so the most kind of have a high level of data test rather than the unit test for it. It just kind of says, given my user software. I think, I, yeah. I think, we, I think we could do, although um, it seems to me in this case, like, you know, in some ways the, the, the first question is, does this work in the way that we want it to, right? So I think we will need to go to that feature spec. At, at, at some point, but I think when, um, particularly in, this is this is us playing around. We might even delete these, but this is us playing around and, it, and exploring how the gem works and if it works as expected. And so this is kind of like maybe a faster way in here. Um, I, I would say I would say in this case, particularly because we've also got as a, so a lot of this app was originally generated using the scaffold framework, whatever you know, it's Rails and some scaffolds, and it generates a view and a control of the model and everything. So we've got like. Bits of existing code that we wouldn't be effectively driving with tests. So it, it's, I think I think this is a place to start this time around. Um, um, so, um, 
Okay. Well, so in the first thing, we don't have to worry so much about testing the gem. We're just going to test the model. So we could say, and remember, we don't have to like. The, the first thing I would do here is let's just check that we can do the thing that normally we can do, which is to be able to. So, and you can see we've got like org all, all one is we've got used battery girl. Did you guys do battery girl this week or last week? Factory. Battery girl. Never heard of it. No, okay. It just basically it's a way of building like a, a, a stub mob, a dummy, dummy, a double object or something. So that's another yeah thing. But so here I would just say like you know it, it can be deleted. So we're talking about the organization. We want to check. There we go. So um, so if we do there and we have something like so you could do like you know in the like. You could do like at org one dot destroy, and even by itself. I mean, this goes back to. I, I talked to you through the four step. My four step process. What's the method we're calling? Then what's the argument we're passing, if any? What's the return value? What's the state change? And you know the next. We don't have to write an exploitation. In the first instance of just driving. Like I guess you guys haven't destroyed so many models before, ever particularly. So indeed. So this is a great place to start. In let's, and I'll show you. I think what I learned, this is something I love using that for is that I can come in here and I can run just that test, um, which should still happen faster than, than in this, but um, it's certainly much faster than running like the entire test suite, because we've got like, a big you know, uh, test suite. But there, so that's, that's part. So it's like destroy has worked, and that's fine. So it can be deleted. Um, I guess the, the, the next thing is if we quickly look at the gem, um, so the way that it works is we add it in there. So it then has it basically adds so that if you do destroy exclamation mark, then it's um, you know, what we want to do is, is check that if it's destroyed, then we should be able to you know uh, undelete it. Yeah. So recovery is easy. Just invoke recover on it like this. So we've got so we get it like that. So. So what we could do here is, I think we can just call, since we have a reference to it in the test, this is assuming that you don't know where it is, right? So, I don't know, um, maybe Nikolai, do you want to write the next, next test that it can be it can be recovered? Oh, did it already do the end for me? It did. But that's right. Not Sorry. Okay, so then, then now. Uh, what, what was the? Oh, sorry, what was the? Yeah, so I think we got here. I guess we'll, we'll need to do at, at all one dot destroy again, because I think we clearly we can't um, we can't um, recover it unless we've destroyed it. So you could start this sentence at at all one dot destroy, and then we could do. At org one dot recover. Like so, and now so you know how to. So if you do, if you do, uh, I think it's a control click on here, and then you can actually we can do the, the, the hotkeys for this. Uh, if we do, um, this is that shift. No, what is it? That's control shift R. So I think we can do control shift R like that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so control shift and R. If we're on a, in a particular test, we'll run precisely that test. So we would we now would we be expecting this test to pass or fail? It's failed. Do we know why it's failed? We haven't told it how to recover. So this is our. We did, this is like the behavior we expect. And you might. I don't. Know, you guys don't need convincing about. Test-driven development anymore, I guess. I don't know, but uh, so th this is it's like it, it could be the case that we had already implemented recover and that we were going to pull in this gem and it was going to do something different and so on. But this is this is the key the key thing. So then, if we pop pong back to um, Sasha now, how do we make this test pass? Uh huh. Do you want more I'm right, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of a chocolate frenzy. Quite justified. <laughs> I need to find the class, like looking at the class of things which Apple is a model and 
Find yeah, I mean, so basically, like, um, we don't. I think that the solution is, is we what we need is, we need to enable an access paranoid. So we need to have the word access paranoid inside the. As I say, you want to find the um, find the the model. So what am I? What is that underscoring? An organization. Mm. I mean, in fact, we've got organization.rb is is here, but so is it in the app model? So what have you? Yeah. So I mean, this would be if we look at the class organization there. We've got a series of things. I mean, I think access, I would be tempted to put that in, you know, at the beginning, like the, the stuff that we're working on here. But so Nicola, you could be thinking. I mean, I think we're going to get through this pretty quickly. We'll be thinking about what kind of um, interface, what the water should look like at the interface level. Is it not the same interface? We're just making focus and behind the scenes a bit more. Hmm. But we'll need to add a button for the um, for the admin to, to use. Right. Um, hmm. So, right, we've got a um, we've got an error. Nikolai, any ideas on this? So, um, Sasha added the access power to the organization model, mm -hmm. but we've got a we've got a. They're like, what are you talking about? Hmm. Indeed, they are. Uh, have we installed the gem? No, no, I haven't installed the gem. So, um, but you changed the error message. So maybe Nikolai, if you wanted to install, if you wanted to make sure that the, the gem was available, what would we do? Hello. If you want to double click to, uh, yeah. Would that be in on top of the? I, I put it at the very bottom. Actually, the, the Rails auto link that was the one that we uh, only you were here with. I added with Friday. Um, so now. Yeah. So save that, and then what do we need to do? Uh, bundle and store where? Indeed. So if you do command tab, we can get to um, uh, the. Sorry. Not that you do. Get to the terminal. So we can just type bundle there. Um. But um. Bundle. Yeah. Never um, but yeah, so what we're gonna assuming that this all, all works. It does. It does. Yeah, so then we can go back here and there is uh, if I do control shift R oh no, we're the wrong place to actually clicking this green out green thing here, we'll click off the same test that we had running before. So we'll see if um, if that works. Uh aha. Okay. So we have another kind of problem. So you've changed your message. So you can relax and allow Sasha to worry about it, or you could be supporting your Sasha. So if I'm gonna, and in fact, so notice here we can click on. This is another thing I like, and it takes us directly to that place where the I, is. I did. I do really like that. I'm I, trying I, to get Ruby mine now. Yeah. Um, I quite like it. So oh, I can get you a free. Oh, I can get you a free as an open source license. You usually have to pay for it. But, um, I can get you the license because we basically you're doing open source work here, so we have a free license for. Uh, um, is it only specifically to open source? No, no, no. I think that once you have it, I think you can probably use it for this. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, you want to make sure that you would, you would, and we, we, well, we need to put um. Actually, as one of our supporters on our website, because they 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 have been for, for two years. Right now, so, so, mm. cool. solid. So, this, so yeah, for this YouTube being here, so does this? I mean, let's look at the error message. This story, I guess, is called in this method. Yes. Um, well, and so so the destroy method is a normal method that's provided by Rails, right? And I guess the, the background here that might help you decipher this is that what the way Access Parallel works is that it goes in and using metaprogramming, it basically reopens the Active Record and it says, okay, destroy, instead of actually doing a delete from you know database, is it will update a flag on the database to say when it was deleted. 
Um, so we've now installed the gem. We've told the, the organization that it should be Axis Paranoid. So the destroy method has been overwritten by Axis Paranoid, and now is trying. it's trying to set this flag on the database to say when it's been deleted. So what does that, like, can you, can you, if you've got in your mind, right, that the, those different bits pieces I just described, what's the, what, what is, what is the fact that it's saying undefined method here, what does that tell us about the state of the model or the database that's wrong? It doesn't have a method to leave that, but this is an active record, indeed, it doesn't have a column in the database, you know, we've still got the, the, the if we look at the, um, if we look at um, uh, and yeah, and then we go to oh, 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 yeah. So yes, we'll, but, um, we'll need a near migration. But if we look, for example, if we connect to uh, LS development, which is where tests everywhere. I mean tables everywhere. Indeed. Uh, but so if we do we like sort of select star from organizations, like so, we can see that. You know, we have a certain number of things here. We get created that and updated that for free, but we don't have deleted that on there. So if we go and have a look here, right, so you can, we've got some options there about specifying the names of the column that it's going to be. Um, but I suspect if we find it looking here, have they got a nice, it looks like they're not, they're not specifying how we do a migration. It's basically up to us, but they will, we will need to have, um, I wonder if they have anything in the wiki. Or no, uh, um, but so I think we're on. It's um, Sasha. If we wanted to have a migration that would add the delete of that column to the organization model, how would we do that? Right, but how do? And, and yeah, we can certainly we can look at the list. We've got lots of migrations. But how do we how do we create migrations? Nicola? Is that, is that a question? I mean, it's a question for the you're you're a pair. I'm, I'm part of the pair scaffolding. Is I'm trying to. In, 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 oh yeah yeah yeah. You're making an offer. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, so yeah, that's the thing. Migrations we have to generate. So. Uh, and where I guess what's the name of the thing where it has delete. Uh, uh, yeah. Isn't isn't the what what migration in the maps when kind of what generate uh generate does not by itself intrinsically create a migration. Generate will um uh make we can generate any generate model controller. And one of the things that generate can generate is uh a I think what we might want to do. Yeah, here is, is, is let's have, let's let's have a look at um, migrations oh, okay. rails yeah, and look at the guide to migrations. And so if we look at add uh, column, so for example, so this is like this would be sort of the standard way that we would add a uh, column. Would we add the new tabs to organization? I think I think that I think we would want because it needs to be not delete at it would need to be deleted at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But in camel case, that's so I think you're, you're so yeah, you're there. I had delete as. Well. Yeah, so so I think deleted and then at. That's right. So two and then organization. Z. Yeah, Z. All the people have complained about that. That's and then do I need to give it a? a, a yes. String so we, we something. It's obviously not a string, but it's a state. So well, I, I think so. What it is? What if, if we look at the gem here? It's telling us that it's a column deleted at, and it's told by this time. So. If we just double check over here, we can have a look for. Um, is there a time thing? In there? I think it's actually it's a time stamp. So we could even they put their general time stamp thing. Oh, date time. That's probably what. Yeah. So I think it's date time. So probably what we want to have here is the word deleted at in camel case. Do you want to go? Yeah. So, but in uh, so snake case. Sorry, snake case. Everything free there. Okay. Uh, sometimes try again. Yeah. Um, deleted. Deleted. And then I think date, time, all, all one word, but uh, lowercase. There we go. Uh, ah, and this actually, so this is um, 
This is Rails 3, so it doesn't have a good record. So we really need to upgrade to Rails 4. Um, so hopefully, that should create a migration. Woohoo! So, uh, what should we do next, Nikolai? Test it again, because let's just see what trains. Shall we? So you can click the green thing, yes. Sorry? Yeah, so that has now been replaced by a, a restart thing. And we definitely still... Anyway, yeah, no. Okay, so I think, unfortunately, we're still on the same message. Mm -hmm. uh, so we now need to run the migration. We do need to run the migration. So how do we run the migration? So I think the problem is it's not Rails, it's Rake. So Rails is the one that does the generation and does the server and the console, but the migrations and the secrets and stuff is all done by Rake. So now we've got Rake uh, DB migrate with a column. Hopefully, um, if we can pop, I think it'll begin like that. I guess not. We'll do this. Um, so hopefully, that should sort it out. And I guess we should. We should maybe then. Our, our test here is a bit weak in as much as it's. Um, oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, and this this one is tricky because I think in. Um, uh, oh. Um, Cool. Oh, yeah, no, okay, I guess that's Rails. Is that Rails 3 syntax? Yeah, this is, I think, this process of ensuring the test database has also been up updated to the uh, development database. I'm hoping <laughs> Rails MV was test and then the same yeah. migrate thing. Yeah, yeah. So th this, um, I think, this was more common in Rails 3. Um, yeah, we could. Oi, cream! So, so we'd have to do Rails underscore EMV equals test. You, 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 could, you could, yeah. The, the other way to have achieved that would have been to do um, Rails EMV equals test. And, and uh, Alex had his set to do both. Right? Yeah. Do yeah. I understand correctly? And in the first thing. Yeah. 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 Right. Some people have already thrown together some. Hmm? All that Alex doesn't seem to know how wide. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's <laughs> That, that's beyond him. Yes. You, uh, well, you end, this is the thing is, you end, as a developer, you end up like, and you do it for years and years and years, and you add all these sort of settings in there, and it's, it's basically, you can't really have a conscious memory of absolutely everything that you did, and sometimes your yeah. works in a certain sort of way. I mean, I, ideally, you will have all of the settings available on um, GitHub so that you could replicate it if your computer disappeared, but then, even then, you might not have a conscious memory of the elements there. Um, but so now, it's gone green. <laughs> that's green. Um, we should reflect on... Uh, refactoring. We didn't make many changes to the, the code here. However, however, what's what's what, what's wrong with this picture? Um, no, I wouldn't. Uh, so we could have made this test pass purely by just implementing the recover method and doing nothing else. We've done the same test one and a half times. Well, that, that's, I mean, this one, you know, we, we can kind of, um, you know, we can we can sort of delete that one, because I don't think it's, it's adding, adding any particular value to us. So we can certainly delete that. That's a little bit faster. Um, but I think that the key thing is that what we want to be able to do is destroy something. We want to be able to, to, to be sure that, if we go and look at uh, the gem, that then... Um, We've got these different, like if we then did, for example, if we did, if we look at org one. So org one, for example, is this, it has this, this name, right? And um, so if we go in here and we would. Yeah, so if we've got, for example. How do you want to destroy that, Sam? I know. That's not very nice. I know, I know. But it's part of, it's part of the bereavement process. Um, but so. Uh, All of the steps. <laughs> Can you think here, Nick? Like, like, this, like, we we probably want what we want to do. I think before and after recover mm. is check first that we can't find it, and then that after we have recovered, it can be found. Because the key thing is what we don't want is we don't want these organisations to once they've been deleted, we don't want them to appear in the normal listing. But with, if we then undelete them, we do want them to appear in the normal listing. So, using your knowledge of active records, what would be the mechanism that we would check that we? Um, wouldn't that we're not finding this. My knowledge of active record, which which is fairly yeah. existent. Uh, uh, I, I, oh no! I think I. Oh well. I think I've heard 
I like used before. Where it's, 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 uh, I can't do it off the top of my head. Though, sure. Think, so. No, okay, but let's, well, let's, uh, the, uh, the, the, so, the, well, what, what's, what's, uh, that until it's good, good thing to do. So, active record. How do we retrieve something from the database? Say that we just want to get. So that we. So that imagine that we're checking that it's that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, well, imagine what we do in a show page, right? There's yeah. a there's a regular method that we use on active record in order to get an instance of an object from the database by its ID. Can we remember what that method is? Oh God, this is a this is a vocab test we desperately need every Friday. Right. You know, and you're, like, what I'm, you do I'm, I'm, now? Uh, and yeah, see, I, I would be looking through my files right now. You could look through your files. You could also, what you could also be doing is you could be, um, you could be looking as, as um, you look through your files as Sasha was doing there. Is looking, looking that up on Ruben Rails, and he, you did uh, find my ID. And to, but basically, it is, uh, so you can't necessarily see this, but I'll, I'll just I'll search for the same thing here. But so we had the uh, if we do active uh, record, and we look up. The active record query and the query interface is what we've got here. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is this is the basic. This is the basic thing that we are able to do. If we have something that is an active record, we can call a class method on it to do a do a search for stuff. So we can do find. Now find by default is just going to grab things. It's going to be based on the ID. Um, this factory girl thing, which um, you know, it's created this thing on the database. We don't know the ID, but we do know the name. Um, so, for example, we could just well, the way of it make, making it a bit better. I don't know that you've necessarily seen. Uh, yeah, so all, the, all, all of the all the examples here are showing us how to query um, on based on things that have been. Deleted or not deleted, but what we want to check here is not so much that situation. What we want to do is we want to check that we can. So, anyway, do you want to start, um, Nikolai? Do you want to type here? Type organization. So, type the name of the um, the, the active record model, the class name, which is organization with a capital. Yeah. So there's organization with Z. Dot. And then so find, but oh, actually no, there. That's the other thing. Did you notice? Look at that. Oh, look at that. This is the other thing that you get in Runeline. Is it shows you many of the methods that you could call. So if we have a look down here, do you want Runeline? So we see down here, it's got find by name. Whose method is fine by name? That, no, that's an active record. Oh, and so it will know the columns in the table and will be like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Name? Oh, we got loads of them. I must have them. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. They, they, it's now an imperative. I'm not on commission. And, uh, <laughs> Time to change that. But so, um, well. Why doesn't, wait, is Sublime incapable of this when it knows it's talking to I think to that Sub Sublime, Sublime is not running Ruby in the background. Uh, RubyMine is, I uh, think yes, it's running JavaScript. Java, it's a, uh, RubyMine is a much fully, more fully featured editor than, than Sublime. It, yeah, it, 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 it can basically do a lot more on the back end. It just runs more slowly. But it, it does run more slowly overall. So, so Sublime is like lightweight and very configurable. Um, you know. Yeah, no, it, it feels like um, so, the difference between Notepad and Microsoft Word. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, yeah. The analogies bit tenuous. Yeah. So here, so if we if we if we look at this, what should we expect about the thing that's going to be returned from this from this call? So do you want to? How would you? How would you do that? Yeah, I think I think no, I think it was as you as you, you expect. Oh, uh, well, here remember we're at a unit. Yeah, we don't have any pages here, so it's just we're expecting the result of this query to. I think it'll probably return nil if we don't have anything. It may, it may but I think it's it's worth starting off with a to equal nil there. Okay, and then but so what's the flip side? I mean, I, I guess actually we could just sort of run. Let's. Even while we're talking about it, if we just um, save that and run that, um, 
So this is now, we're, we're checking that once we've destroyed it, that it doesn't show up in our normal course of things. But so we're going to want to do something after we've recovered it, then we're going to, so that's passing. But so now maybe after um, uh, line 509, we want to check that it is, we could say, uh, we, we, well, we could, you could try actually at org one. You could do at org one. Uh, it depends on the uh, how that. Yeah, at, you see, yeah. see, we've got this object. No, I was, no, no, like this one. Oh, I think I've, I got I got locked out. In do do. Uh, okay. Uh, I was it at org one. I mean this one. Like we don't want it to be an exact match, but ideally all of the records from there, all of the the fields. So if the equals is doing not an exact object match, but it's doing a you know prop. Um, property by property thing there. Oh yeah. So no, it's doing. Um, oh, that's interesting. Now, which line is that? That's saying that on 510. That's not working there. It's expected that, and it's still got nil. So that's interesting. That makes it seem like that is still failing there, or at least it's 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 bringing back nil again. And the recovery is not doing what we took. So this is like you know we're, we're let's see was there something else that we had to do? Uh, I guess it may be that. Well, all one is like so here we in the factory goal we set up at the beginning that it's like this. I think the problem is maybe here that what we need to do is we need to um, follow their follow their advice. So rather than doing the recover here, we need to like we need to do something like this where we I think this this all one once we call destroy on it, it may be that we can't actually do the recover properly. So it does that and then we so maybe what we need to be doing is we need to do first recover there. Like so and we'll see. But um, so this is one of the things that can happen that could be confusing is that um, the you've got the data object that lives in the Ruby memory, and then you've got the database table. Oops. Uh, I'm try to, I'm try, oh, sorry, that should be organization. Um, yeah, I was wondering why you got that in there suddenly. Yeah, sorry, I was The the um, the uh, when we. We, you know, we've basically got. It's basically undry. It's annoying it's, that it's undry, but we've got ah under five the first four. Oh, okay. Oh, we just got Yeah, we do. Um, it's rather undry that we've got this data in the database, and then we've got this um, model entity existing in the kind of memory of the, the computer rather than the database. And so when we do at org one dot destroy, and that change makes habit. Yeah, there we go. So that, that's passing now. The effectively the it's kind of you know making changes in the data memory. So I tried to do, recover on that, and that was it was failing because it wasn't getting it, it was no longer an exact representation of what was in the database. And that, that, that's a general issue that you can have is that it's similarly with if you do it like a, a new active records, it creates a thing that hasn't got an ID in it, and so on. And it's the, not until you save it to the database that it gets it. anyway. But I think overall now that looks like we've got the functionality that we need. Um, what we should do now quickly is we should do bundle exec break spec and run all of the tests to check that the access paranoid functionality that we've introduced is not having a negative knock on effect on all of the other many things that happen in this app. Um, so that's a good but, but I think we've got the basic feature that Oh, um, bundle exec, I think, I think, it, 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 I guess you could think of it as sort of the rails of the equivalent of doing bin break. Bundle exec basically make, make, ensures that we're running, we're running this test using the libraries that are in the gem file. Because otherwise, if we just run rate uh, spec, then potentially it will run our spec and will do it. It might do it with other other gems. Um, yeah. Anyway, but so they will pass. Order fifty pass. All pass. Twenty-one seconds. There you go. Um, so I don't like uh, we. That in itself could be a little pull request that we push, push forward. I guess I will just quickly run the cucumber test while we're thinking about it. Um, we could now. 
Uh, we could also do the uh, user interface side of it with the feature spec. I don't know how you guys are feeling about time. Yeah, you want to try and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, but I can I can sit around for a few more. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hungry too myself. Actually. Yeah, food. food. That helps. But maybe I think maybe this is we could we could start and we could maybe try and see if we can do a few minutes on getting the bus in, in place. Yeah, yeah. What what I'll. Yeah, I'll yeah, do you guys, do you guys want to take? Um, yeah, I've also got someone waiting on me for long. Oh, okay. No, well, then maybe let's let's let's. let's, let's. I don't just see Elder Scrolls. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> Sounds very possible. Somebody it's may have put, put, put data in there. But no, I mean that's you know that that by itself is a is a, is a chunk. We we can finish that. You you've seen this sort of like we we only did the um unit test, but uh, we can do the um the feature again at some point in the in the future. It would be. It would just be a question there. Of, I just like the idea of not having to have a whole aspect window and having to sift through loads of code when you've got the specific test that's failing there. Oh yeah. That's very. Oh totally. No no. I mean, and some people like they run and see this. And I, this is our, our total. If everything else is working. Yeah yeah yeah. And basically, so, so I'm, I'm, and it's important, but I would only run that after after this to check integration wise against. And this, this is now. So I, rather than having our features in our spec, we have our features in Cucumber, and so that's. Boom! You know, done all those tests. So everything else seems to be working. So with some fair degree of confidence now, um, what I can, I can, if I did get status here, we're on our access panel of makers. We th these are. Uh, oh, I don't know if there's a change in there. Uh, I think I know what I did there. If I just do git check out that one, and so we've got these these four files. There are you know our change that we've made. And so we can do git, and they're not saying we can do git to minus m, adding uh, yeah, access. Yeah, AM, is that, is that yeah, so this means that I don't have to, in this situation, given that I've got these four files are uh, not staged for commit and it knows about them already, rather than adding them each individually, I can just do git commit minus am, and it will basically add those four files for me and, and do it in. And do so that's like add and do the message. That's done, and then if I do git push origin uh, access panel of makers like so, then that's now a branch up in my uh, personal repo, and I can do a pull request on. Um, but um, Nikolai was saying he's got somebody waiting for lunch. I think he's got somebody waiting to like meet me. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should like. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, you and I can carry on for a little bit if you, if you want yeah, to, or, or if you want to have lunch. I mean, I want to have lunch pretty soon. I mean, let's worry about lunch and we'll have to talk. Okay, yeah. No, well, let's, I think, yeah. Uh, I'd like to carry on, but no, sure. maybe later on today. Sure, I sure. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, but but uh, this was an important feature that we needed out of, and, you know. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the thing for taking time. And yeah, if you have any questions about the, the IMDB or anything that... I will probably be attacking you again. I'll look forward to it. I'll be ready. Then just follow Cool beans. Cool beans right. indeed. Thanks, guys. Uh,